that's what made that happen. It wasn't the fact that they seen the tape. It's the fact that we seen the tape and we had cried out and we spoke on it and the whole world spoke, not just D.C., not just Minneapolis, not just L.A., New York, but Paris, Tokyo, like, you know, parts of the globe that you wouldn't think that had emotion. But real is real. And people felt that. That's right. That's what it was. We did that, man. It was it was a joint effort. And, you know, and that's why I was just I was just commending everybody who who was there, and, you know, who did anything. I told him, even if you didn't go out in March, you know, you wasn't you wasn't on the front lines. You didn't have to. If you tweeted about it, if you told somebody about it, if you did anything, you contributed to this win. man. I you think word, word of mouth meant more than anything on this on this movement, because once the word got out. People wanted to, to, they got curious and they wanted to see it. And once you seen it, you, you you had to either hate the feeling or you want to do something about the feeling. That's right. Most people, no matter what color they was, they hated that feeling and they wanted to do something about it. That's why you seen mixed marches, you seen mixed protests where it wasn't just dominantly black. You know, Black Lives Matter, that's the main mission that we pushing, but other lives had to get involved for it to really matter. That, but that's the key. See, the key has never been us to just say Black Lives Matter. We wanted the whole world to understand that Black Lives Matter because it seemed like people didn't realize that. So the fact that now we got white people, Asian people, every nationality was crying out that Black Lives Matter, man. And it, it changed, it shifted something. We shifted the paradigm with this one. Man. Yeah, this new generation is, uh, they're the extension. Like I say, my generation, we the grandkids of the slaves they couldn't kill. So mm. naturally, we breed it this generation you feel what i'm saying so this generation is breeded up under us and if you couldn't kill our grandparents you definitely not gonna kill us and that's right i feel like this is the rebirth of us saying that we want to be treated equally and we're not standing down we're not going back in our house to chill in two weeks we're not gonna move until this movement is official like a referee with a whistle that's right that's right that's what it was man so i'm just saying now we just got to keep the pressure on, man. We got to, we, we, we know where we at. You know, it's another young lady. Have you, I don't know if you heard about Breonna Taylor in Kentucky. Yes, I did hear about that murder. Yes, sir. They, they murdered that lady and they shot her eight times after they shot 40 times through her windows. They kicked, they knocked on her door to go do a, a no-knock raid. They just kicked through the door, never said they was the police, kicked through the door in the middle of the night. Her boyfriend shot one shot. They shot 40 shots. No, they never even went inside the house. They shot through the windows, hit her eight times. He never hit nobody. They charged him originally with attempted murder. And none of the officers who killed her is still working. None of them ain't get fired. They ain't get reprimanded, nothing. You know, and, and she's just dead. So we, we, we fighting for that. At least they at least got to get fired, man. Negligence. Right. You can't, there's no job in the world where you could just kill somebody by accident, you know, through negligence, and you still got a job. But I think that's the part that we got to now to where now we want to start enforcing the law on the law. We need to give them some laws. They need to understand that they're not above the law. And we pushing for that for the mayors and the governors to sit down and listen to us and say, look, police got to be held accountable. They got to be able to know that if they do kill somebody negligently, they got to deal with the consequences like we do. Now, if they're in the line of duty and self-defense and it's all within the the laws or whatnot, and them protecting their lives, we can't say nothing. We got to leave that alone. But That's if it's right. a, an outright lynching or shot in the back or unarmed, you know, black man, we can't live with that no more. We won't live with that no more. That's right. There's no, there's no, there's no excuse for you to shoot. Somebody shoot one shot after you're knocking, you shoot 50 and 60, and you don't even know who's in a house. Like, that's complete negligence. Kids was in there. A little girl lived there. She just wasn't there. She just happened to be out of town with her mother. Or for that day, but if they would have, they, she, they shot through the baby's room, like 20 shots was in the room, it went through her bed, through everything. So the little baby would have been dead. So like, it, there has to be some level of accountability for things like that. And, and right now, there is none. I think that if you notice, like, they didn't want to look bad on this protest thing, so they started using non-lethal weapons, right? I watched mm -hmm. the high-speed chase the other night in L.A., it was a high-speed chase. The dude finally stopped, then he got on the top of his car, then he started running, and they shot him, but they shot him with non-lethal, and he stumbled, and he failed, and they arrested him. I'm like, okay, well, that should be the procedure 
For every black man, shooting with some non-lethal, one of the rubber bullets, to get him to fall down, tackle him, arrest him, and let him live to go to court. That's, I mean, it's simple. It sounds so simple to us, but it, it don't, it's not common sense to them. I don't know why. You know, I don't know. Is it, but you think, you know what the thing is? It is common sense because they do it for white people. Right. You know what I'm saying? We've we seen many sure. examples of it. We've seen many examples of, for example, when you see the uh, the mass shootings, the ones who kill up 32 people or shoot up the whatever they shoot up, churches or whatever. You see them get walked to the car, sat in the back of the seat, given water, put in, given them a bulletproof vest, and walking them to court. All the time. I, I've watched I've watched police have full out standoffs with people with guns and they never took a shot. The, the, the white people was pointing guns, they behind the car like put the gun down. Just relax. Calm down. They a, a white man, a black man pull out a a, a a lighter out of his pocket. They done lit him up. It's the temper lit it's the up. temperament of the officers. That's why I feel like the only way you can't change an officer's heart. You can't change a person's heart. You can't t change their emotions and their feelings. But what you can do is change their conscience. And when you put a law in effect, that gives you a conscience to say, well, damn, if I do do it, I know I may be facing charges. Not if I do do it, the good old boy is going to, you know, stand up for me and I'll be right back to working in two months. No, nah, them days is over with. Exactly. And that's what, we, that's what we're here to say. We're here to say. It's gonna be accountability, man. When you when you fuck up from now on, you're gonna be held accountable. Right. You know, same way we are. When we do some shit, we know we going to jail. Man, you if me and you riding in the car right now pushing positivity and we pick up we pick up one of our brothers <clears throat> who not on the same page as us and we put him in the car with us and we go to the liquor store and he just so happened to get in the shootout and jump back in with us, guess what? All three we of us charged. That's right. We with definitely no question. no question. You don't can tell don't them about what you've been doing positively and none of that. Nigga, you charge right now. That's right. And your bail going to be about a million. And they can't wait. They can't okay. wait. But we're we, we going to make some changes, man. And that's what I want to say. We're educating right now. we educating. That's why I really got behind you and your team and what you pushing. Because I feel like we got to unite. We got to get behind when we see somebody leading and see somebody taking charge. We can't stand in the shadows. We got to stand right on his side. You know, Trey the Troop, that's one of my my family members. So when I see right. Trey standing side by side, Trey has always been about, you know, giving back and helping. So I know that where your heart and where your spirit is, is naturally matched up with mine. So I'm saying that to say this. I'm down with the movement, whatever you need from me, behind the scenes, on the scenes, on social media, in public. I want to be a part of the board. I want to be able to help get finances for y'all so that way when y'all making those trips and doing those things we can raise some money because I know that's a real issue when it comes to black people trying to do something positive when it's time to ask for money people get to act looking funny like that's all it's about no nah, but we need money to get to certain locations and to be able to be able to set up and do what we got to do that's right you know I, I say that all the time I'm not like like I was telling you I'm not a person I don't like to ask for nothing you know because I do this I do this work really from my heart Right. You know, I do it because it's my it's, it's my calling. You know, I feel like when I'm not doing this work, I'm not even in my right space. So, but I understand now being in it, like you got to travel. Like we can't get to Kentucky for free. You know, we can't get to Houston when we got to be there for free. We can't promote all this stuff. Like we, we got to pay people to buy t-shirts to go to places to promote. We got to, Lloyd, we got to be out there to uplift these people's voices. There's certain things we need to do. You know, I didn't know that before, but you know, so when when you said that, when you know, when you said that you wanted to be a part of this board, you know, and that you wanted to be a part of these finances, I was like, damn, that was real, man, because you 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 just came out of it. I ain't come to you with it. You was like, I want to be a part of that. I I know what you need. I yeah, know what you I've need. Done this, I've done this before. I've I've tried to build these types of things. The finances is always the the big scenario. At the end of the day, you hire fifty people that push the movement, and then it's time to make the move, and it's like, well, I got to get 50 plane tickets, 50 hotels, hold on, where are you getting the money from? Like, yeah. and, and ain't nobody quick to throw money to the cause when the cause is going against the system. You feel me? Right. So it's like, you got to have people that really care about the cause and understand <laughs> that this needs to, to continue to push because look what we did from where we started and where we at. That's right, man. We, we did that. Like, I, I want you to make no mistake. They was not going to do that. 
they was trying to ignore. You see what they did? You know, they just um, they didn't put anything. They didn't. They was acting like they was trying to ignore it. Right. You know. So I want everybody to know: it's official. Snoop Dogg is on the board of Until Freedom. He's going to be in our finance department. He's going to be raising, you know, our money for to make sure that we be able to do the work that we need to do, man. I'm, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for really, really, from the bottom of my heart, the whole team. When I when I reached out to the team, I told you that um, uh, Monique Delia, Tim's ex-wife, is out the chairman of our board. Yes, sir. You know, and I reached out to her. I had to, you know, we had to get confirmed because she run the show. Yes, so sir. So she's like, Snoop, all right, Snoop been okay. She yeah. said, that makes sense. You know Me what I'm too. saying? That makes sense. Do the right so thing. I was like, yeah. So, you know, so now it's official. I just want everybody to know it's official. That Snoop Dogg is on the board for Until Freedom, man. Right, and I got I to gotta make a donation. I got to start off with a $10,000 donation. Oh, I used to put my man. money where my mouth is, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you got to put man. your money where your mouth is, man. You can't just come in here saying that you want to be down and you ain't showing the proof, and that's just a, that's my donation, you know, to start this thing off. I'm on the board, but I'm making a donation. I'm going to be in charge of making sure that people that want to donate that want to donate and want to help, this is how you can get out and this will be the proper way to doing it so that way we make sure that, the, you know, the funds get recommended to the right people and y'all be able to do y'all thing anytime and all the time. Man, that's love, man. I, I ain't even expect that. That's real love, man. See, you know, it's only a few people. Like, I, I, like I've been in the industry for a while. I know a lot of people in this industry and it's only a few people that my spirit is genuinely always connected with. And, you know, and before I even, we had any conversation, I just always knew that you was an authentic person. Like, I know a lot of people that always be like, yo, Snoop is like game. You know, I used to be with game all the time. I was more Black Wall Street, and he always spoke so highly. Like, he's like, nah, Uncle Snoop. Like, that's the real, like, every, I've never heard anybody say something negative. So, you know, that when somebody is genuine, when you don't never hear anybody say nothing negative, man. And this right here is just, just shows and proves that, you know, the rumors is true about Snoop Dogg, man. You know, so I, I really... I feel, I feel like this, nephew. I feel like if we would have been in the 60s, we'd have been in the Panthers. You better know that. Oh, no, we definitely would have been Panthers. Off top, oh, no, right? We definitely would have been Panthers. Ain't Off no the question. top, right? Off top. Ain't no question. So Ain't no question. That's the spirit of who we are. We are... We are their, their bloodline. We're the continuation of what they, what they couldn't do. Remember the government... Broke them down. Remember, the government knocked them off. Yeah. They was teaching black folks how to be really in tune with who they were, how to be self-sufficient, how to bear arms, how to know the law, how to really understand the system. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, that's what we're doing. We're a new form of teaching that. But now we got help from other races, which makes it that much more dynamic because now it's starting to affect them like it affects us. That's right. And it's just dope, man. It's, we we gonna we gonna get we gonna make it, man. Like it's a shift. I feel it though, Snoop. Like, don't you feel like everybody's getting conscious? Are uh, these youth have an energy? Like I was having a conversation with people, and they was like, "Oh, they out here looting and all this." And then it was this one young boy, right? That they, that I seen going viral. And he was sitting there on his bike, and he said, "We got to be realistic about this thing." He was like, "After Martin Luther King died." They rioted and looted for six days. That's how we got the civil rights laws passed. Mm. He said they wasn't given. They wasn't giving us nothing before we did that. You know what I'm saying? And he said that when you look at it, he said they made over a thousand arrests, but because they don't want to arrest three officers, think about it. Mm. They made thousand arrests. They done issued all types of the government. I mean, the um, national guard into the streets. Trump talking about sending the army into the streets. Well, all you had to do was arrest three people. Because they don't want to give us nothing. Right. That's how serious white, su white supremacy is such a disease that the ego, this is an ego. Because right. they don't lock anybody else. We, us, they lock it. You can do whatever you want to. But their ego says, we ain't going to let those niggas tell us what to do. Right. We'll do it when you we know? get ready on our own. We'll do it and if we decide. If we, we decide. We and, when, and when we do decide, he going to get the, the weakest charge. <laughs> You know, and what happened was the people spoke. And look, the people look, came at, said, oh, look no, at God. No. Look at God. The, look. The, the, the dude that got appointed was a brother who's aggressive on the job. Aggressive. Yes, sir. Keith He's Ellison. Aggressive. Man. That's right.
No let up. No let up. No. no and that's and that was because we fought, man. It's because we fought, and they were sitting in the rooms like, okay, we losing billions of dollars. All type of shit is going down. We are praying. The streets is crazy. We already dealing with the COVID nineteen. Now we dealing with this. This ain't gonna work. We gonna have to fix this. Man, Minnesota better know better, man. They burnt that police station down, man. That's unheard. Damn. I was right there. I've never Snoop heard of nothing that. like that as long as I've been living. The burnt a whole precinct? Snoop, I was right there. Them people burnt that precinct down. Them young kids, they, you know, and it wasn't, and it, this is what I'm trying to do. These wasn't criminals, Snoop. You know, because that's what they try to make it seem like. Oh, these right. are just thugs and criminals. It was a consorted effort of people. These was People that got jobs, college students, brilliant young students was out, sitting out there arguing and saying, listen, I'm not looting nothing else. I'm This this precinct is the reason why a lot of black people was dying. This precinct right here has imprisoned, falsely imprisoned some, a, mo, a lot of my people. This prison is the reason why all of this, I mean, this precinct is the reason why all this is going down. We need to get this out of here. Mm. And they was willing to deal with yo, no, they was willing to take whatever came with it. These and it wasn't no, I know street people. These wasn't street people at all. These we wouldn't, average, do, we wouldn't do, we wouldn't do nothing like that. <laughs> we wouldn't. I'm trying to tell you. I was like, y'all talking about the precinct? I'm talking about that. That was that was super gangster right there. Like you know what? That was super duper gangster because we don't think no. like that. No way. We don't think like that, man. We we run away from the precinct. We ain't running to please. the precinct. Man. That's what I'm trying to tell people. They talking about thugs. We ain't running to no precinct. We running away from it. Far away. We gonna get as far away as possible, <laughs> man. So just why just seeing that energy, what them young kids gave me so much energy. Snoop, I was sitting out there with them young boys and girls, and they was like, we ain't going home. And they started throwing, um, they started throwing tear gas, and the kids were standing there running back, and they started throwing them back. They like they was going to war with the police. Like we ain't going nowhere. We this is how we have the right. Rest the cops. I'm right. like, damn, this is different. Right. Well, see, this I, is like, different I like energy. that they energy. See, but that's why I say, like, remember the energy that we come from. Like, when the 92 riot happened in LA, like, like, we cut from that Black Panther. We cut from that the slaves you couldn't kill. We, we cut from that. So naturally, we reacted. This generation is cut from us. So they that's cut right. the time. Like, they, like, really that's not with none of that. Like, <laughs> zero time. None. Because you know the thing is, Snoop, they don't have no fear. Every generation loses a level of fear because our generation never seen slavery. You know what I'm saying? The generation before us seen it. So they was they had a little more fear. We never we heard about it, but we never seen slavery. So we 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 grew up actually in a level of some level of freedom to where we could say, man, fuck y'all. They didn't go up to that. So this generation is seeing black people who are Success. They got Uncle Snoop. You know what I'm saying? They got a black man that's been doing something for 25 years that say what he feel. He feel what he say. He don't cap. He don't do none of that. When he feel like he feel, you ain't gonna disrespect him. His mind is he gonna be on. He gonna speak his mind. They they grow up seeing that every day. Right. So they don't have no fear at all. None. You know. Right. So it's a different. The way they move is way different. That's a fact. Cause my grandmother was a first generation slave. And the way she used to talk to us, she called black people colored people. Yeah. And that's so, just the way, that's the, how she talked that's to how it was. And that's how it was. So it's, it's just, you can see that the shift in, the, in you know, the shift in the paradigm, man. We ready, man. We ready now, man. But I, I want to say thank you. I know I ain't going to hold you too long, but I love you, man. I love you too, my brother. You better know. Real, that's man. why we're here talking about it. We talk behind closed doors, but the public need to see this real brotherhood and this real black love and, and know that we for each other and we are each other. And that's what they need to start doing on the streets. So I want to shoot a shout out to all of the gang members, all the Bloods, the Crips, the Latinos, the Asians, everybody that's a part of the gang. We need to join up and become one gang right about now in a real way. That's right, man. We definitely got to do that. All the brothers, ain't we ain't, ain't no more crime between us, man. We're not hurting each other no more. That I ain't thing with is that over. at all. That thing is completely over, man. You know, that thing is completely over, man. I love you. I want to say thank you for tuning in. You know, once again, Snoop is on the border until freedom. We got Uncle Snoop. Look, this look. This, we can't lose. We cannot lose, man. We can't lose at all, man. I appreciate you. 
I love you. I'm, you know, I'm gonna give you a call. Yes, sir. And um, and, um, and we here. Love you back, my brother. Stay strong and keep pushing that push. Thank you, King. Till we meet you. again. Yes, sir. Y'all better not play with me. Snoop Dogg is on the board of up till freedom. Like we ain't playing. We are not playing, man. Like it's gonna change. The change we talking about is gonna come, man. I swear.